How's it going, everyone? I really enjoyed this week's reading um, and looking at the academic drift. Uh, the first section of the Romanowitz um, chapters, um, the want to publish and not focus on teaching, um, really stood out to me as something that was important because I have seen that in my own experiences. And thinking through that, um, you know, I've seen that the evidence of that. But I've also seen um, the drift on the other side where. Um, the research is now showing that uh, that's not always the case. Um, I know in my undergraduate degrees, there was a heavy focus on the teaching aspect as opposed to um, in my more advanced degrees, I started seeing some of that shift, which I'll talk about in a moment. Um, the optimization hypothesis, to me, just makes absolute sense. Um, concept that optimization should happen in both areas instead of just one being that um, optimization of research and teaching itself improves the overall university experience for everyone that's there um, and also produces the best students. Um, looking at uh, one of the early beliefs that university research was critical for uh, global competitiveness, especially in the 90s, um, is really interesting to me because I still see when working with uh, NC State and various organizations through uh, the school that I work at now and lead. I see a lot of <clears throat> investment from the state and federal government for funding um, in which the university has paired with uh, local businesses and that kind of thing to um, expand research there, and it led to more positions. Um, for example, I'm actually seeing that now with NC State's uh, poultry research. They hired a bunch of professors to um, <clears throat> come and teach classes at the middle school and high schools and area schools. And because they did this uh, combination, they received more positions, and um, it's a uh, continuality with um, the local chicken uh, farming industry in North Carolina, which is, is pretty major, especially on the western end of the state. Um, so that heavy focus allowed them to gain more positions and more money for the school and also more prestige for the school. Um, PhDs getting tenure has become much harder which um, the evidence is finding that they're probably a lot better at the research experience and, and process. Um, also brings out a question to me, are they as strong with the teaching priority? Um, I thought that was kind of an interesting point. Priorities of universities shifting back to teaching um, through the American colleges and universities, uh, especially because of the foundations out there like the Carnegie Foundation. Um, and looking at that, that research has developed the teacher guides, um, ideological shifts, teaching and learning centers, promoted um, teacher craft and outcomes assessments, which is uh, pretty phenomenal. And looking at the um, collegial culture through the Engaging Six Cultures of Academy book, um, and looking at that, the idea that it encourages uh, autonomy and diverse perspectives is always a good thing. Um, men and women tend to be successful by their engagement of internal and outside governance agencies and gains prestige over time. That's kind of the formula that has been present for, um, I believe, a long while in, in the college world. Collegial culture histories uh, are very fascinating, but when I was reading, what really stood out to me was, um, you know, the impacts on today's culture, since that's my, my main concern in terms of uh, ongoing study in this class. Uh, the centrifugal curriculum, um, which is you know a discipline-focused curriculum instead of a wide, a wide berth curriculum, is is very interesting to me. Um, a lot of my students that have just gone into college are seeing that even more. Uh, you know, the two first years of college are usually very widespread knowledge, but they're already seeing that even those two years are starting to get tracked with um, their disciplines, um, with universities requiring that they take specific classes that are aligned to their actual um, you know, four-year degree, even though that's, that's supposed to be uh, a very generalized uh, perspective during that time. There's definitely a focus on developing teaching um, within the research and scholarship traditions and the new schools, which is a good thing. Um, yet there's also still that heavy value placed on faculty autonomy which is also good because that encourages people to study and grow within fields. Um, the prestige and dominance of the large universities continues. We definitely have that in North Carolina. Uh, you can see that with uh, Duke and with uh, UNC Chapel Hill. Um, 
research still remains king. I have several friends that work at UNC Chapel Hill, and um, while they care about the teaching part of their job, uh, they literally never talk about it. Um, when we're setting over beers and scotch, it's always um, about what they're researching right now. And um, I almost have to pry out of them like what classes they're teaching and what kind of impacts they're making. Um, powerful academic disciplines remain, um, and leadership is collegially oriented. Uh, the collegial culture dominated uh, many of my university experiences. At the beginning of this, I spoke a little bit to that. Um, I did graduate from Appalachian State with three degrees. The first was a BA in secondary English education. The second one was a master's in reading. And the third one was an EDS in educational leadership. Um, the focus on research and scholarship with uh, many of my professors increased from degree to degree. In my BA, there was a lot of focus on the educational teaching, um, but once I got into the master's program, it was clear that they were looking for students to write papers with and really focused on that research part. Um, once I got into the EDS program, that was almost a minimum requirement. Um, so we had far fewer class meetings, um, did a lot of online stuff, and the heavy focus was on the research part. And there's nothing wrong with that, in my opinion. I thought it was a great thing and a good experience for me as a student because um, many of the things they were researching were things that applied to, you know, the educational world. And I thought that, you know, that was really incredible. During my time there, I had three university professors that were recognized in major publications for research um, with, at that time, was uh, teacher pay in North Carolina. And um, that was really an awesome experience because I got to work with um, not just local governments, but actually the state senate and be a part of that um, even as a student through my professors. So while that research focus was definitely a, a huge part of what went on, I don't necessarily think it was a bad thing. Um, my uncle was the dean of the School of Music at App State and looking at the collegial culture, that is literally everything he's told me my entire life about how to get tenure and how to be a successful professor and um, I will say that those conversations led me to realize that being a professor is probably not something that I want to do. Um, even though I do want my doctorate, um, I wanted to focus that doctorate on working within local LEAs, um, you know, to improve teaching at that level. But in, in, in understanding all of that, um, I can clearly remember when my uncle shifted his mindset from the teaching of music and, and, and really began to research the implications of, of that teaching and looking at that and you know, he was published many times and was pretty well known throughout the state and, and the country um, and that was really important to him but I will say that there was never a moment where he was not still focused on the students that he had in front of him.